Today I'm talking to Mark Angelo from British Columbia in Canada. He is a world famous river conservationist and founder of the UN's World's River Day, celebrated by millions of people in close to 100 countries. He has even received the Order of Canada for his efforts to protect and restore rivers around the world. Mark has paddled more than 1,000 rivers in over 100 countries, and his work has been the subject of several feature films. He has led many river and stream restorations, which he wrote about in his new kids' book, The Little Creek That Creek. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Angela. Happy River Day. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, Robert. Thank you for having me and congratulations on what you're doing. Thank you. I loved your book, The Little Creek That Could. Click the link below to find a copy. You are the founder of River Day. What in particular are we celebrating? Well, River's Day takes place every year on the fourth Sunday of September. Uh, this year it takes place on September 25th. And as you said, there'll be events, thousands of events going on around the world in 100 countries or more, things like stream cleanups and stream site planting projects, educational outings, uh, community riverside celebrations. A lot of schools will be doing projects centering around rivers. Uh, but Rivers Day really is all about celebrating, you know, the incredible values of our waterways, not only in our country, but around the world. And, and rivers have these incredible natural values. You know, they support huge numbers and diversity of, of fish and wildlife. Uh, they have these great cultural values uh, in that if you look at the history of, of Canada, for instance, uh, historic settlement patterns usually took place along rivers. So rivers have had a huge impact, I think, on who we are as Canadians. Uh, rivers have great recreational values too, whether you live in Toronto or Vancouver or Winnipeg or any small community in our country. Uh, you know, people spend time walking along rivers, uh, boating on them, paddling them, fishing them. Uh, or simply sitting and admiring their beauty. So, so rivers have these great values. That, that's one thing that we celebrate on Rivers Day. But, but in addition, Rivers Day tries to create a greater appreciation of the many threats and pressures that confront rivers. And lastly, it encourages people to become more active uh, in trying to protect our rivers. Uh, so that's an, an important element of the event as well. Yeah, um, I actually went, uh, uh, I actually went to go camping in a garden for you. a few days ago. Good for you. Thank well, you. we're very lucky in this country. Yeah. Um, hunger stones, which mark famines, are being found in Germany as Rhine waters level drop. The source of the Thames has dried up in England, which has never happened before. China's largest river, the Yangtze, the third largest river in the world has dried up. What is happening? And is there anything people can do to help stop this? Well, a lot of this relates to climate change um, and climate change without question is affecting rivers globally. You just gave us a, a number of examples. We are seeing things like hotter summers. We are seeing more prolonged uh, and pronounced dry spells uh, in our country and, and elsewhere around the world. We're seeing greater extremes uh, in terms of low flows or, or higher water temperatures and all of those create conditions that are very stressful for fish. Uh, but also when you look at what's happening, you look at the examples you just mentioned, that's having a huge impact on people who, who may depend on those particular rivers for a source of water or perhaps uh, as a source of power, hydroelectricity. So climate change is a huge issue. It's an urgent issue. And it's something that governments around the world have to, to address to a greater degree. Yeah. Is this water gone for good? Well, I'd like to think no, you know, that if we take the, the right steps, you know, we can turn things around or we can't mitigate some of the damage that, that's occurred. Uh, so I don't think you can ever give up. And I think young people like yourself will play a huge role uh, in, in turning things around. Uh, and I'd like to think that uh, you'll do a better job than we did on the environmental front. Thank you. Salmon population estimates in British Columbia dropped by half this year. 
What is happening there and what is threatening the health of rivers right now? Well, you're talking in particular about sockeye salmon. Um, now sockeye salmon in BC, we had some mixed results actually. Some of our rivers up north like the Skeena had good runs. We saw some good runs, uh, good returns on Vancouver Island. Uh, even to the south of us, the Columbia had better than anticipated returns. But on the Fraser River, yes, our returns were lower than expected. And instead of getting nine or 10 million sockeye back, you know, uh, in fact, we'll probably only see about half of that. Uh, and the reasons for that, I think, are complex. Some of it has to do with ocean conditions. Also, some of our, our Fraser bound sockeye were intercepted by commercial fishers and in both Alaska and the state of Washington. And I think that's something we have to talk to our American friends about a little bit more to try and rectify that. But also, I think some of that relates to habitat damage as well. Uh, you know, rivers, as you read about in, in the book, The Little Creek That Could, rivers get hit by a lot of different things. You know, they, they suffer from things like pollution. Uh, things like urbanization, things like industrial development. I look at the lower Fraser River as an example. We've seen a lot of development there. So my hope is in future, there'll be a, an even greater effort to not only protect those habitats that remain intact, but to try and restore those that have been damaged in the past. Yeah, a lot of beaver habitats are going down because the water levels are going down as well. So the beavers don't have that much water because oh, they're brought, at like the top and then it's lowering down so they can't really do anything. You're so right, Robert. You know, those lower water levels, they affect fish, they affect all kinds of animals and they affect people. Yeah, they can't get to their homes. That's right, it's a really good point. What do you wish more people knew about the importance of healthy rivers? Well, Rivers Day certainly tries to promote a greater public appreciation of the fact that, that rivers are the arteries of our planet. They're lifelines in the truest sense. That's something I've said for many decades, but my hope is that more and more people will look at our rivers in that way. Uh, also, uh, an event like Rivers Day promotes the fact that healthy rivers and streams make our communities better places to live and safer places to live. Uh, that's another key point uh, and that I hope more and more people in time uh, uh, appreciate. Uh, and lastly, I think Rivers Day strives to create a, a greater appreciate, appreciation amongst all of us in this country as to just how fortunate we are to live in a part of the world that has such an amazing river heritage. What can kids like me do to help protect rivers? Oh, Robert, that's a good question. You know, there's lots that kids can do. Uh, and I look at the work you're doing with your YouTube channel. I, I think that's a wonderful example. Uh, but also, uh, I think all kids can play a role. I think all children can help to spread the word about the importance of our rivers and the need to, to properly care for them. After all, when you come right down to it, it's children, it's the kids of today that are our environmental advocates of the future. Uh, in addition, in school, for instance, kids could perhaps encourage teachers to have in-class discussions about rivers, especially in the run-up to Rivers Day. Um, perhaps they could talk to their teachers about the idea of, of, of projects relating to, to rivers or essay contests or, or art contests pertaining to rivers. Maybe even they could ask about the potential for a, a, an outing or a field trip to a nearby creek or stream to learn about how a stream functions and to learn about things like the water cycle. In addition, I think kids could give thought to what they do on a day-to-day on -day -day basis to ensure that they take steps to conserve water and conserve energy, ensure that they never litter, um, to be careful about what goes down storm drains. And even in, in uh, your own home and in, in, in a children's home, whenever uh, uh, their folks, and often kids will help their folks do the laundry, for instance, try to do your laundry in a cold water wash or warm water wash as opposed to a hot wash simply because hot water uh, results in more microfibers being released from your clothes, which often end up in rivers and oceans. Uh, and lastly, uh, I think perhaps kids could look uh, into the possibility of, of participating in Rivers Day with their families, either attend a nearby planned event or maybe create an event of their own. Uh, do a family trip to a nearby stream 
learn about it, but at the same time, take a bucket and a pair of tongs and pick up a few scraps of litter as you go. So there's things like that that all of us can do that can help to better protect rivers. Uh, you know, I, once again, I've been so impressed at children today, how interested they are in environmental issues, whether it be climate change or whether it be issues that center around water or rivers, and they're all interrelated actually, but the, the interest I see uh, amongst children today uh, in the environment gives me a reason for hope. So, this is the little creek that could. So I got this book from Kindle on my iPad. So I'm just going to read the first page. Okay. A boy spending time beside a river or a stream was one of my favorite things to do. There was just something about moving water that I thought was magical. So that's the first page. <laughs> and when I was a child, I could spend hours beside a river, turning over rocks, looking for critters, throwing worms to fish, looking for what insects I could find. Uh, yeah, I knew as a boy that uh, I just loved rivers, and creeks, and streams, and uh, uh, yeah. And, and this book, The Little Creek That Could, tells the true story of a stream that was incredibly damaged 50 years ago. And it tells the story of our effort to try and clean this creek up. Uh, and it's a really neat story in its own right, but also I think it uh, the, a really important message of the book is that, that nature can heal itself if only we give it a chance. Uh, so uh, I think it's a positive message that uh, if there's a will, we can turn things around. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining me today, Dr. Angelo. And remember, together kids can save the world. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Robert. Take care. Bye-bye.